It was a group of 32 Koreans who arrived in Israel after visiting the pyramids on the Sinai. They planned to come to Israel and then leave for Europe or by the bridges to Jordan. This attack could send Egypt's tourism industry even further down. Red Sea resorts are traditionally favorites of Russian and Asian scuba diving enthusiasts. The Ukrainian government has dropped criminal charges against over 200 anti-government demonstrators. This after protesters occupying government buildings agreed to vacate the structures. And Italian President Giorgio Napolitano has asked the 39-year-old leader of the center-left Democratic Party to form a new government following the resignation of former Prime Minister Erenukto Leti last week. For more on these stories and others, we go with this year's Fire Roundup. Ukraine announced that it would drop criminal charges against 234 anti-government demonstrators as part of an amnesty deal aimed at reducing tension between the government and opponents. Meanwhile, protesters agreed to vacate government buildings. Despite the conciliatory moves, however, the situation remains tense, with the opposition seeking to keep up pressure on President Yanukovych. Opposition leaders were to meet Monday with German Chancellor Angela Merkel to discuss Germany's support for Ukraine. Some 600 Syrian families arrived in Lebanon after fleeing the fighting in the Syrian town of Yabrud, the last rebel stronghold in the border region. The town has been severely bombed and shelled in a recent operation that raised fears of a major assault by ground troops. Meanwhile, the second round of peace talks in Geneva ended with little progress over the weekend. Italy's center-left leader Matteo Renzi has been asked to form a new government following the resignation of former Prime Minister Enrico Letta last week. The 39-year-old mayor of Florence had engineered the removal of his party rival Letta at a meeting of the Democratic Party leadership last week because of the slow pace of economic reforms. Renzi said he would begin to lay out a program of reforms to be completed within the next few months. Snowfall in the northwest of Saudi Arabia on Sunday drew locals and visitors to scenic mountain areas to enjoy the spectacle. Snowfall is a rare sight here, although it did occur last December. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro has accused unnamed individuals of trying to create a political crisis with the ultimate aim of justifying a coup d'etat. Maduro's allegations come against the backdrop of street protests by students which often end in violence. Details in this CFI report. Displaying death threats against him published on Twitter, Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro has been discrediting the student demonstrations that have been going on for almost two weeks. He said the opposition wants to get rid of him, as with Hugo Chavez in 2002. We are not dealing with an opposition, demonstrations and students. No, this is about creating a political crisis to justify a coup d'etat through the use of violence. The president strongly criticized student leader Leopoldo Lopez, wanted by the police. He stands accused of homicide after the demonstration on Wednesday in which three people were killed and 60 others injured. But Lopez has announced another march for Tuesday. I will be there and will be up front. I have nothing to fear. I have committed no crime. I am a Venezuelan devoted to his country, his people, to the Constitution and the future. On Sunday, Venezuelan students once again took to the streets of Caracas, criticizing the incompetence of the government. They were protesting against the lack of security, one of the highest crime rates in the world, regular food shortages, and inflation at 56 percent. Opposition leader Enrique Capriles expressed his support for the wanted student leader. He said the government cannot stand any opposition. For this government, if one person has a different position, or if the students have a different position, or if the 
country has a different position, that means that they're on the side of violence. But Enrique Caprides does not entirely agree with the strategy of the students. He says conditions are not yet ripe to force Maduro to step down. The student demonstrations often end in clashes. The injured are both on the side of the students and the Chavez Maduro supporters. We now take our second break. Stay tuned. Gumtel Football Club are through to the next round of qualifiers in the CAF Federation Club competition after a comfortable 2 0 win over the Sierra Leonean Armed Forces FC goals from Sam Jiba and Saja Jajusi and the telecommunications boys, a 3 0 aggregate win to progress to the next qualifying stage of the competition. Reacting to his side's victory on Saturday, the president of Gumtel Football Club saluted the performance of his players than winning if you win everybody is happy as I told you in our last interview we, we, we are prepared for this game because we knew it's not going to be easy because they'll come all out to play because they need to beat us 2 nil here to qualify but as we advised the boys they took our, our advice frustrate their efforts by scoring within 15 minutes which we have achieved it is excellent everybody is happy yeah. Now, um, the attention shift to the next stage, that is the second round of qualifiers. Um, how are you going to prepare for that stage? We are already on it because we knew we would make it through to the second leg, uh, the second round. Because last year the, we, we did it and this year also we expected to win to get to the second round. And second round is not also always easy because uh, this time around we are expecting a team from either Morocco or Burkina. They also play today. We, we expect to know the results uh, overnight. We are prepared because we are expecting them in the next two weeks. So it's not going to be easy. That one, the first leg is home. And uh, playing home always gives you an advantage because you have the crowd behind you. And if we can do it home here, I know we will be able to secure something outside. MS. Your target, like you said the other time, is to get to the group stages of exactly. the competition. Exactly. Um, with the performance that you showed today, are you convinced that you have what it takes to get to the group stages? I am, I am convinced, MS, because you've seen the boys, the way they played. It's extremely excellent. Everybody is happy because we have scored two good goals, two clean goals. We should have scored more goals. But uh, unfortunately, we did not. But thank God we have scored two goals maximum three points which is excellent so whichever team we have in two weeks time uh, there will be trouble because my players are big players now they are mature and experienced so we will show that inshallah next two weeks And before we take leave of you, a quick reminder of the day's top stories. Gambians are preparing to mark the 49th anniversary of the lowering of the Union Jack and the hoisting of the red, white, blue, white, green. Lawmakers have hit the road to acquaint themselves with conditions in madrasas and health delivery facilities in the Upper River region. A bomb blast on a bus carrying 33 tourists has claimed the lives of three South Korean nationals and a driver in the restive Egyptian Sinai region. And Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro has accused the opposition of fomenting trouble to make the case for an unconstitutional change of government. That was all in this edition of the news. Thanks for watching and join us at 10.4 on the bulletin.
Think Universal Properties. Universal Properties is the leading real estate developing agent in the Gambia. Universal Properties prides itself with experience in the property business.